Dude, that's not knocking. I mean, I'm knocking, knocking. I'm not knocking that at all. I probably hit 120, and I'm a whole lot younger. I do have a question from Wales. Uh, ask, please ask Mr. Chapman. Uh, my 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 question is: uh, There are hopes rising here that the growth in the United States and the BRIC nations could help offset the problems within the eurozone. Uh, However, I'm still worried that a strong recovery might be hindering. If he does, uh, you should know what BRIC nations are. If not, respond. I do. I do. Uh, do, you, do you well, know? those are the nations uh, like Venezuela and Brazil, uh, China, India, and Russia. And I don't really think they're going to be in any position to help anybody. Uh, they're going to be struggling. Uh, Venezuela's got a financial problem. Uh, They've lent a lot of money to Argentina, and Argentina's got a worse problem. I couldn't believe it. They had a 10-year bond sale yesterday in Brazil, 11 and three-quarter percent. I mean, the U.S. bond sale was 334, and Brazil's supposed to be booming. Why are they paying that kind of a rate? There must be something that I don't understand about what they're doing. But the point is, interest rates throughout the world are fairly high, and they're going to go higher. And it's going to inhibit world trade. The world's going to slow down, whether it has hyperinflation and then depression or just plain old deflationary depression. You've got to get ready. You saw what happened in in these events with the uh, Israeli military and the boarding of those ships. People being shot who were unarmed. I mean, what are these people thinking about? Are they trying to start a war? Now we get Turkish ships that are accompanying these ships that are bringing food and and medical supplies and things that people need in the Gaza Strip and, and because they can't get it because the Israelis keep it out. And, you know, that could start a third world war. And I don't like it. Hmm. Uh, I'm trying to put together uh, a couple of questions here. Uh, This one person has, uh, please ask Mr. Chapman if credit unions are safe. And what about uh, Edward Jones? They guarantee their own CDs. What do you feel about them? Who's going to guarantee Edward Go- Jones? And what are they guaranteeing them? <laughs> I mean, do they have big bales of toilet paper in the back? That's ridiculous. It's like these insurance companies. Well, we guarantee you 3 or 4 or 5% on your policy if they're in business. Seven major insurance companies took ga- uh, TARP funds. They haven't paid it back. And you don't take top funds unless you're broke or you get serious problems. So the answer is don't. You don't want certificates in Edward Jones. You don't want CDs and and, uh, and uh, credit unions or, or banks or savings and loans or anything else. You want it in gold and silver, coins and shares. And if you can't get coins, buy shares. I mean, we recommend them. It doesn't cost you anything to find out what to do. You just email me. My God, we must answer 500 emails a day. The weekend before last, just on Saturday and Sunday alone, I had 800. We're helping millions of people. And these broadcasts go all over the world. And we get people... Well, moderate means some of the multi-millionaires who are buying into the gold markets. And this is not something everybody's doing. This is not a bubble. This is people who are just trying to protect their assets. And if they come out even on the other end, that's great. If they don't and they make piles of money, that's even greater. Then they can help other people. I don't know anything right now that I'd exchange gold and silver shares or coins for. But 
But may, maybe there'll become a time when everything is on its back and the office building that cost $10 million is now up for sale for a million. Maybe you want to buy it with gold coins. Who knows? I knew a man in Chicago. I knew his daughter. She was a client of mine when I was a broker. He was a dentist. He was piled up with cash and gold. He exchanged it all for blocks of real estate in downtown Chicago. He died. He was worth $50 million. And of course, his daughter got what was left, and she was an only child. And uh, so I guess she lived happily ever after. I haven't seen her for many years. <laughs> I guess she will with $50 million. <laughs> This is Temple. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, the man that is most plagiarized in the informational international network of finance is Mr. Bob Chapman. The G20 is aiming to reduce the red ink, and the recovery is on track. The question today for Mr. Bob Chapman in this last half of the hour is, Mr. Chapman, do you believe the, that the G20 is aiming to reduce red ink and keep recovery on track? Well, first of all, they're certainly wanting to reduce losses or keep their profits either at the same level or higher. But that's pretty hard to do when you have, in most places, growing unemployment particularly in the United States, which is the biggest consumer of all. And you have prices rising. And very often companies can't pass on those increases. And so it's very, very hard for them to make good profits or more profits. And that's going to get much worse. And there is no jobs. 22 and 3 eighths percent is a true unemployment figure in America. What it is elsewhere, it's hard to say, but it's certainly not what the official figures country to country tell you what it is. It just simply isn't. And uh, that's going to deteriorate. You're seeing the last of the better jobs that were available pass on there's going to be less and less hmm. Mr. Chapman did go, this is a question from the chat room from Blog Talk, those of you in Blog Talk if you're registered with Blog Talk you can get in the chat room and ask questions and yes this is the number one radio station on Blog Talk Radio and Wind Talkers Radio Network heard around the world the number one show during the week the question is, Mr. Chapman, did Goldman Sachs short the sale of BP stock three weeks before the explosion, and is there any proof? Well, first of all, it's official that they sold 43 uh, point something percent of their holdings. Now, what they didn't say was whether they shorted the remainder against the box or they bought derivatives to offset the position. We'll find out in time, and that information is not available now, and they're not going to tell us. My guess is they bought derivatives and offset the position. Shorting against the box is pretty simple. You're long a share of stock, and you want to freeze your position at this level right now. So you sell a share of stock. So you own one and you sold one that you really don't own. So your position is frozen. It's probably cheaper and easier to do it with, with derivatives today. I don't know. I haven't been a broker for over 20 years, so I can't comment it up. But it's my guess that they, they bailed out of the whole position. They just didn't want to show you that they were doing that. Obviously, they had advanced inside information. This thing just didn't happen. Hmm. 
Mm. And where do we go from here? Well, I don't know. We've got to find out the truth. Roman Stag needs to be put in a, co- a box or a coffin. Uh, they sold off for a third of their stock, and they're benefiting from what's going on in the Gulf. Who's investigating Goldman Sachs for this tragedy? Nobody. And they won't. They sold 43%. Not a third. A third is 32.5%. Substantial difference. And I think they, via derivatives, shorted the rest of their position. <laughs> 